Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FY22 Earnings Conference Call of Indian Energy Exchange, hosted by Access Capital Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phones. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sumit Kishore from Access Capital. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Access Capital, uh, I'm pleased to welcome you all for the Indian Energy Exchange Q4 FY22 earnings conference call. Uh, we have with us the management team of IEX, which is represented by Mr. S.N. Goel, the chairman and managing director. We also have the senior management team. Uh, we will begin with the opening remarks from Mr. Goel, followed by an interactive uh, question and answer session. Uh, over to you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the earnings call for quarter four and fiscal year 2022. I hope everyone continues to be safe and healthy. Joining me today are Mr. Vinit Harlalka, Mr. Rohit Bajal, Mr. Amit Kumar, Mr. Sun Gautam, Mr. Samir Prakash, Mr. Suti Bhatia, and Mr. Archit Gupta. Friends, the COVID-19 pandemic induced slowdown is now behind us. The Indian economy is gradually regaining the growth momentum and is now poised as one of the most promising growth economies in the world. For IEX, the fiscal year 22 was hold special significance since we achieved all-time high volume of 102 billion units, achieving a growth of 37% on year and year basis. As per Recent government data during the third quarter of fiscal year 2022, India's index of industrial production held up to 1.7% in February from 1.5% in January 22. Cumulatively for the fiscal year 22, we expect India to achieve robust GDP growth of 8.9%. The increase in industrial and economic activity has direct correlation with demand for electricity. In the fiscal year 22, the national peak demand for electricity increased to 201 gigawatt, seeing a 6% year-on-year growth while electricity consumption increased to 1370 billion units, seeing about 7.8% year-on-year growth. As on 31st March 2022, the total installed generation capacity reached 399 gigawatt. The renewable capacity at 157 gigawatt is approximately 39% of installed capacity. The growing contribution of renewable energy is aligned to India's voluntary commitment of 500 gigawatt from renewable by 2030, made by our Honorable Prime Minister at COP26 summit held in November 21 at Glasgow. The power policy and regulatory paradigm has been undergoing significant transformations to align to the aspirations of building a sustainable and efficient energy future. Several policy and regulations took place during this fiscal year, and most of these developments are conducive to further growth of and development of the power market. The most significant policy and regulations initiatives in this quarter are the CRC Ancillary Service Regulation 2022, which includes the secondary reserve ancillary services along with exchange-based Tertiary reserve ancillary services aiming to maintain the grid frequency stability close to 50 hertz, besides increasing reliability. Second is, CRC has also issued now draft REC regulations, redefining the process of issuance, including accreditation, issuance, issuance exchange, redemption. The draft regulation also proposes inclusion of other non-conventional technologies such as offshore wind, hydro, municipal solid waste, biomass and biofuel in the RE certificate category. CRC has approved procedure for related to implementation of National Open Access Registry, which will enable automation, increase efficiency and transparency in market processes, making them seamless, automate transmission allocation, 
thereby enabling greater efficiency in, in the power market. In fact, NOR is going to be implemented from 30th of April of this month itself. CRC has issued draft connectivity and general network access regulations 2022, which will simplify as well as rationalize transmission allocation, transmission pricing, and support strengthening and augmentation of transmission networks. These regulations will further support growth of power market in the country. On the policy front, the Ministry of Power recently introduced the green hydro, hydrogen policy and guidelines for setting up EV charging stations. Both these initiatives are aimed at facilitating the energy transition. Continued trust on distribution reform, initiated pro process for amending National Electricity Policy 2021, green open access for consumers with contracted load of 100 kilowatt and above, amendment to deviation settlement mechanism regulations linking deviations to the price discovered at the exchange platform are few other significant policy and regulatory initiatives undertaken during the fiscal 2022. We are keeping a close watch on the policy and regulatory developments, assessing their impact as well as the new opportunities that these developments will unfold. IX performance, during the fourth quarter of the fiscal year 2022, IX achieved 27.032 billion units of volume, comprising of 23.65 billion units in conventional power market, 1.12 billion units in green market, and 22.49 and lakh certificates in the RSA segments, which is equivalent to 2.24 billion units. We achieved 21% year-on-year volume growth across all market segments during the quarter. The growth in conventional power market was driven by increase in electricity consumption in states such as Maharashtra, Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, and Punjab. Cumulatively, in the fiscal year 2022, 102 billion units volume comprising of 90.6 billion units in conventional electricity market, about 5 billion units in green market, and about 6.4 billion units in the certificate market. Further, the new segments such as RTM, GDAM, GTAM played a pivotal role in accelerating volume growth and contributed 24% to, to the total volume. The conventional electricity volume that they had term had and the real time market achieved 90.61 billion units volume and saw 24% year on cumulative growth. In the cross border electricity market, which is a part of conventional day head, mark, day head power market, we achieved about 1.05 billion unit volume. Both ne Nepal and Bhutan have been participating actively on the sell side and buy side. We are consistently in touch with uh, Bangladesh and are positive that they would be joining this market shortly. Thus, we are just working towards building an integrated South Asian power market in the power market. The green market comprising of green day head and term head segments achieved 4.945 billion units, which is five times increase over the last year. The renewable energy certificate market achieved a volume of 60.78 lakh certificates, equivalent to 6.078 billion units. The energy saving certificate market achieved trade of 2.86 lakh certificates, equivalent to 286 million units of volume. With customer centric city at its core, at IEX, we endeavor our, our endeavor however, has been to advance and strengthen exchange technology and introduce innovative products and services to provide the best in class experience to our customers. We launched the web platform to provide a digital onboarding experience anytime, anywhere, easy and secure access to the trading system. We also and also market data insights for our customers to make the bidding experience seamless with zero manual effort. We launched automated bidding through application programming interface, API, for the real-time market products. We soon plan to commence API-based automated bidding for DAM, GDAM, and RHC segments. API also has been launched for the market data 
to enable the market participants to automatic, automatically fetch data across the market segments. We have also provided bid creation tool to our customers to make it very easy and fast to create bulk bid details for unload on our exchange platform. Further, the value-added services have been introduced for the renewable generators to facilitate generation forecasting solutions from the best-in-class service providers and panel with IX. Lastly, I am enthused to share with you that TNBC has recognized the outstanding leadership demonstrated by IEX during the challenging COVID times, as well as the positive and transformational effect we have been bringing to the power sector. <laughs> Honorable Finance Minister Srimati Nirmala Sitaramanji recently conferred the most promising company of the year award to IEX by the seventh edition of India Business Leaders Award organized by CNBC TV18 held on 1st April at Mumbai. Indian Gas Exchange, I will now briefly touch upon developments regarding the gas market in and IDX. The gas market saw significant traction in the fiscal year 2022. IDX has been growing from cent to cent since its inception and has been solidifying its performance by creating new reports on the business front almost every month while accelerating development of the gas market. IGX has achieved financial break-even in the fiscal year with a profit of profit after tax of almost about 1.8 crores. During the fourth quarter of the fiscal year 2022, IGX achieved a total volume of 7 million MMBTU and cumulatively in the year FY 2022, IGX achieved total volume of 12 million MMBTU compared to 0.2 million MMB2 in the last year. During the year, prominent leaders such as prominent leaders in the petrochemical sector such as BPCL, IOCL, IGL, ONGC, Adani Gas, Private Limited among others joined IGX as members. I am pleased to share with you that recently IGX also won the prestigious Diamond Award in the Smart Startup category of the year at the sixth edition of the India Smart Grid Forum 2022. Financial and business performance of the company. I will now come to the financial and business performance of the fourth quarter and the fiscal year 2022. On a standalone basis, revenue for the fourth quarter of the fiscal year 2022 increased to 128 crores, witnessing a growth of 25% on year-on-year -year basis. The fact grew by 27% with a margin of 63%. Revenue for the fiscal year 2022 increased to rupees 478 crores, witnessing a growth of 34% by year wide basis. The PAT was 302.5 crores, which grew by 42% by year wide basis, with a margin of 63%. The company declared a final dividend of rupees 1, equivalent to 100% of the face value of the equity shares taking total dividend payout during the year to 200% of the face value of this year. The key highlights of the fiscal year 2022 included 90.61 BU volume in the conventional market, achieving a growth of 24%. 4.945 billion units volume in the green market, achieving 30% volume growth. 63.64 lakh certificates constituting 60.78 lakhs of REC and 2.86 lakhs of energy saving certificates. Thanks, we are working towards introducing long duration contracts in both electricity and renewable energy by the end of first quarter 23. We are also working to commence other new market segments such as ancillary markets, capacity markets, gross billing contracts, national open access registry, etc. and remain optimistic about commencing this in this fiscal year itself. In February 22, CRC also approved introduction of hydropower contracts at IEX, which will enable obligated entities to comply with hydropower purchase obligation. In our quest to consistently advance con customer centricity, we will be shortly launching web-based bidding platform to enable 
our market participants easy and secure access for bidding on the bidding on IX technology IX platform. Further, we also aim to provide advanced data analytics as well as new technologies such as robotic process automation to eliminate human dependency in our processes. These initiatives would allow us to focus on introduction of new products and services to enable our market participants to drive greater value through exchange platform. Besides strengthening the core business through new products, we are continuously assessing adjacent business opportunities to further diversify and our business. With that, I shall conclude by thanking all of you. We will now commence the question and session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchtone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Anyone who would like to ask a question, you may press star and one at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Mohit Kumar from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir. And congratulations on a very, very good quarter and a fantastic year. So my first question is, sir, it has been a story of contrast, uh, especially the April April month. You see strong demand in the India, in the country, but at the same time, our volume is suffering because of price cap. Also, the shift to TAM and GTAM is causing loss to volume for us. How do you see it, you know, going forward? Yeah, Mohit, thank you uh, for uh, congratulating us on the performance. And as far as the demand scenario is concerned, in fact, increase in demand in the month of April is uh, as high as 11 to 12 percent. It was mainly because of revival of the economic activity and early onset of the summer. Uh, we did not expect summer to be so severe in the first week or second week of April. And uh, the demand has increased by 11-12%. At the same time, the imported coal prices are very, very high. And uh, imported gas price, LNG price is also very high. But I understand that cost of generation on the imported coal is about 9 to 10 rupees. On the gas, it is plus 25 rupees. So, generation on these imported fuel is less. It is less by almost about 9 to 10,000 megawatt. So, because of this, I think there is a gap between the supply and the demand. And, uh, you know, this resulted in uh, increase in the price on the exchange platform. Price uh, had increased to almost about 18, 19 rupees. Many of the time blocks, the price was 20 rupees. And uh, regulator and the government, when they analyzed that uh, even when the price is 20 rupees, gas-based generation is not coming. They are not selling on the exchange platform. It is only the imported coal with the variable cost is 9 to 10 rupees. So they felt that it is mainly because of the high demand the price has increased. So to avoid that high price in the market, they cap the price. So that is one thing which has happened. We are capping the price in the efficient market led to the process of that there is no price discovery on the exchange platform. And this has led to I mean, buyers sitting on the alternate platforms, alternate options. So this is something which has happened now, but I believe uh, this is a phenomena which is for a short period. Uh, in the month of May, particularly after 10th of May, uh, the wind generation starts increasing, and uh, we are expecting almost about 150 to 200 MU additional generation from wind. The hydro generation will also start uh, increasing. So I'm sure you will see in the month of May, situation improving and uh, price discovery again happening on the exchange platform. 
So thank you for the detailed answer. Sir. So my second question is on the gas exchange revenue which you have booked in the in the quarter. That number is 28 lakh. That number seems to be slightly on the lower side. Can you confirm the transaction fees which you have earned from the gas exchange during the quarter? Just seven minutes, please. Yeah, sure. Uh, for the quarter, the transaction fee was 5.6 crore. Okay, because it's segmental source of 28 lakh, you know, that's the reason I'm asking. Yeah, the reason being because the IGX ceased to be a subsidy company effective from the mid of January. So the consolidation okay. was only till day, and post that number being associated company, so the numbers are not consolidated. And the majority of the volume started picking up from that, so that's why the numbers didn't match. Understood, understood, sir. Thank you, sir, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parni Vijay Kumar from Spa Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, of the uh, new products that uh, we are planning to uh, uh, initiate in this FY23, like uh, national open access registry product, ancillary markets, gross bidding contracts, etc., uh, could you individually highlight the uh, potential uh, in uh, say billion units overall and also a uh, color on uh, you know what is the purpose these products will solve for the buyer like what is the need that it will uh, serve yeah one is uh, long duration contracts long duration contract is today on exchange platform we can launch only these products for delivery up to 11 days it was because of a reason because that uh, in the earlier uh, civil regulations, there was a provision that uh, our contracts cannot be launched on the spot exchanges. But that, that issue has been resolved now and by the order of the Supreme Court and now delivery contracts will be regulated by CRC and derivatives by the SEBI. So CRC, we have applied to CRC for approval of long duration contracts for delivery up to 365 days. Uh, hearing was held, public consultation was done, and now order is reserved. We are expecting the order shortly from the regulator approving this long duration contract. Now we will be able to offer to the market participants delivery contracts up to 365 days. So with this, you know, we will be able to then also get the market, get a good share out of the bilateral market. And uh, volume happening in the bilateral market is uh, about uh, 50, 55, 50, 60 billion. So that is the market size, and uh, we want to get into this market size also. That is for the long duration contract. And uh, ancillary market is, uh, you know, regulator has uh, uh, notified the ancillary services, and under the ancillary services, the tertiary ancillary services through the market, through the exchange. So exchange will be inviting bids from the market participants who want to participate in this market. And then we will give these details to the system operator for uh, inviting the generation from them or requisitioning the generation from them based on their merit order. So that market will be started by the regulator as and when they notify the date of uh, execution of that. And uh, that is yet to be notified. I will keep the regulation, but the date of starting is, is yet to be notified. Uh, third is gross bidding. Uh, we, gross bidding, again, we have applied to the regulator for the approval of this product. This is a very, very innovative product. I mean, I'm sure you have heard about the AMBIT. AMBIT is a concept which government of India introduced to have the entire generation of the country through the, market, through the exchange platform. And since it was mandatory, there was a lot of observations, a lot of resistance by many of the market participants, many of the state distribution companies and states. So we introduced gross bidding, which is a sort of voluntary ambit. I mean, uh, it is up to the state to participate in this market. And uh, if they participate in this, they will be able to make some significant gain out of it by efficiently uh, selling and purchasing their power. 
So we have, uh, I mean, this kind of uh, products are in operation in a couple of uh, exchanges in other part of the world. North Pool and Japan, Japan uh, power exchange, this cross bidding concept is uh, working very efficiently. So we are also talking to the states, doing the policy advocacy, uh, explaining them how can they get benefit out of it so that as and when this product is approved by the CRC, we can launch this and we can get good participation in this. Uh, CRC is yet to approve this product. I think uh, they are looking for more public uh, discussions and comments on this. And fourth one was the uh, National Open Access Registry. National Open Access Registry is not a new product. It is basically uh, a automation of the entire open access process. Today, for the open access, application has to be made in the SLDC, RLDC, and NLDC. They have to do the process manually and give, give the open access. And particularly at the state level, there are a lot of problems in this. Now, with the National Open Access Registry, everything will be automated. This will streamline the process. So I'm sure this will also further give a boost to the spot market. It is difficult to uh, identify the potential opportunity through this NOR, but then this will smoothen the process. So, and, and you know, not only the new products, whatever products we launched in the year 2021, I think a lot needs to be done in this year to get participation in these markets. Like green market, which we started last year, in this market, we have done a volume of almost about 5 BU. But I think there is a large opportunity. We are interacting with the many IPPs, many public sector companies who are in the uh, green generation space and uh, discussing with them that there is good opportunity for them to set up renewable energy through the market-based instruments. And uh, we are also getting favorable response from them. And in fact, uh, in the policy makers and uh, regulators are also quite uh, open to this idea. So I'm sure all these, with all these initiatives, it will be possible to maintain the growth momentum. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. My second question is on the uh, MBED. Can you give us an uh, update on uh, when is this likely to uh, in, uh, say comments? When CRC is likely to come up with uh, final guidelines on this? How much of uh, volumes you know we can expect uh, this year, and what could be the transaction fee on these volumes? And did you say? Yeah, MBED, yes. Uh, I think uh, we should stop discussing about the MBED now. I think uh, nothing is happening on happening on the MBED. That's the only thing I can say. Uh, Ministry of Power has uh, issued. Uh, a small document to CRC, send the document to CRC for uh, uh, further taking action, and CRC is not taking a, any action on that. Understood, sir. Uh, loud and clear. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sumit Kishore from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks, sir. Uh, my first question is, uh, could you comment on the CRC order dated 26 April and the potential implications for transaction fee across contracts? Uh, also, we understand uh, that your uh, competition might already be offering rebates or incentives on transaction fee. What is your business strategy in this regard? Yeah, first of all, see, when we filed our uh, petition with CRC, uh, that was filed in the month of January. That petition had uh, many items in that. And there were many compliances with respect to the PMR. We wanted to inform them to CRP and the sudden minor approvals in the rules and business laws and also approval of the transaction fees. So for the other activities, no public consultation was required. So CRC has approved all of them. Yeah. And uh, on the transaction fees, CRC said that you file a separate application and we will deal that. And same thing we have done for the other exchanges also. So they will deal with this transaction fees for all the three exchanges. I mean, for the two operating exchanges and the third exchange who wants to start their business, they have also applied for the approval transaction fees. So they will deal with the transaction fees for all the three exchanges together. And uh, 
I am reasonably sure to get approval uh, of the fees as specified by CRC in the regulation, which is two pass on other side. They themselves are specified in the regulation, and that has been the industry practice from the last 11 years. So I don't see any challenge in that. In fact, CRC has approved a trading margin of 7 pesa for the traders. So value provided by the exchange in the process is much higher than what a trader is doing. So if 7 pesa is approved for the traders, I'm sure for the power exchanges, 2 pesa on the other side is reasonable. Sure. Uh, my second question is, uh, could you also speak about the likely volumes uh, expected in REC and uh, maybe saving certificate in SI23. And if you could comment on your market share in the last fiscal uh, and even data for April might have come. This year we did up almost about 60 lakh certificates. And I'm sure uh, in 23, the number should be higher than this. Uh, but uh, again, very difficult to say because uh, transactions in REC market is dependent on participation of the states and uh, State participation because of the, their financial condition. Uh, we don't know to what an extent it will happen. But uh, in spite of these difficult conditions, still we, we are reasonably confident that uh, almost about uh, 80 to 90 lakhs of RSC certificate transactions should happen. Okay. So 80 to 90 lakh is for the market? No, for IES. For IES. Okay, so uh, just to understand this better, I mean, uh, in SI22, for the period REC traded, uh, what was your market share? What was the market share of IEX? It was 75% plus for IEX. Okay, and last question, uh, is there any update on when uh, HPX, uh, you know, the plan is likely to commence uh, its operations with an exchange? I think... You should be in a better position to tell me that. <laughs> okay, sir. We'll leave it at that. Thank you. Tell me if you have any information. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Tanvi from Banyan Tree Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi. Thank you for the opportunity. So I had two questions. One was on the dividend payout policy. Uh, you look at our uh, balance sheet. We've got a lot of cash now, uh, but dividend payout continues to be the same the way it was uh, you know, last year. Any you know thoughts on how dividend policy would pay out going ahead? And second was on, uh, on you know, if you look at our volumes now, and uh, that is XREC, uh, given the higher base, we, we, you know, kind of have plateaued or even degrowing on a, you know, on the main basis uh, and, uh, because of the high base. How do we even, uh, you know, how do we look at volumes from here on uh, with, with, you know, of course, the, you talked about a lot of products that are expected to come, but those could be, say, in next two to three years, like uh, next one, one and a half, year, two years, how do we look at the volumes? Like, will it be a decline first and then, you know, a rise in the volume, uh, you know, post the uh, new products are launched and, uh, you know, they gain the scale? First, number one is dividend. See, we paid this year one rupee dividend, which is 100% of the face value in the month of January. And now we have declared another one rupee that makes it uh, uh, almost about the dividend outgo of 180 crore rupees, which is no. 60% of the total. What, what I meant was as a percentage of your net profit, right? Uh, so yeah. the, the payout ratio. So it is 60% of the net, it is 60% of the profit. That is one. So, I mean, uh, as I mentioned in the past also, our dividend policy is that at least 50% of the profit will be distributed in the form of dividend. So, we have given this year 60% of the profit in the form of dividend. Second question is about uh, the volume projection for this year and particularly because of the high base, which because of the large growth which we have achieved in the last two years. Uh, see friends, you know, our market share out of the total generation today is only about 7%. And uh, 
government of india vision is to take this short term market to 25% in the next 3 4 years and there is a purpose behind this vision see if we are going to add large renewable generation capacity in the country integration of that with the grid will require a very very liquid market so that if there is any variation the utilities can purchase power through the market to make good the variation and real time market was also introduced keeping all this thing in queue so there are many policy and regulatory initiatives which are being taken to defend the market so i believe the opportunity side is much larger basis definitely high and uh, to achieve growth of 35 40% is definitely going to be difficult but i'm sure a reasonable growth of 20 25% should be possible to achieve but that all depends on the market condition i mean uh, our usp has been creating efficiency in the market and a efficient competitive price discovery so that market participants can get benefit out of that the shortest scenario is not conducive for the market so if power supply shortage scenario continues for long time it may have at work impact on our world sure get a point makes sense thank you so much and all the very best thank you The next question is from the line of Ankush Agarwal from Search Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. So again, on this uh, CRC order of limiting, restricting, uh, restricting the prices. Uh, so you know, uh, what kind of discussion did we have before this order was implemented, and after this has been implemented in terms of you know, uh, would it be a long term, you know, solution that wherein for the permanently the prices would be capped at twelve rupees, or you know it. kind of a short term tenure something some kind of communication that you have received from crp no we did not have any interaction for capping the price we had interaction mm-hmm. with crp they wanted to understand what is happening in the market why the prices have increased but uh, right. what i understand that there was a direction from government of india under section 107 to uh, review the market situation and cap the price and uh, mm-hmm. as per that direction crc has capped the price at 12 rupees this capping is uh, basically what we under though there is nothing mentioned in the order but what we understand mm-hmm. is uh, just for this interim period when the deficit is there and as as soon as this situation improves the capping will be moved right right so what you are saying basically you know is that the exchanges are not consulted before this order came Yeah. At the right list. Right. So, 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 uh, in the long term, don't you think this is a detriment to your business model? Because you know, every time power generation increases, obviously the prices is going to go high, right? And that time, you know, the prices are going to be artificially capped, which reduces the transaction on the exchange. So, practically, you know, uh, the exchange won't benefit from you know growth in power demand as such. If there is like In the short term, if the power demand increases, uh, it's actually not beneficial. It's actually detrimental to our business. So you know, any kind of you know, com- conversation that you think you need to have with the regulator in terms of this. Now, see, the power demand increase is definitely good for the sector. It is a good economic indicator. Uh, but at the mm-hmm. same time, we have to ensure commensurate increase in the supply of power. Unfortunately, mm-hmm. in the month of April. the demand increase at was at a very high level uh, to 11 12% and supply commensurate supply is not available and i tell you mm-hmm. this is a, a phenomena which is not only in india this is world over this kind of phenomena is happening friends in france the prices of 30 euro per megawatt hour which is about 30 rupees a unit is very common on the exchange platform right which they had never heard of so commodity prices have increased input cost have increased electricity cost has increased so i think this is a phenomena which is for a short period and corrective actions already are being taken 
government of india has already advised all the states and the central psus to import coal so that uh, uh, they can uh, supplement the generation by another 4 5% and if we can have another 4 5% of generation that's all that is what is needed to bring an applicability in the market right right uh just another bookkeeping question so for the full quarter you said uh, ijx achieved 5.6 crores of revenue uh, can you tell me the ebit as well for the quarter yeah i'll request mr vinay sarlalta the ebit level is uh, if you look at the number absolute number it was yeah. approximately a uh, 1.5 crores 1.5 crores this is against 1.14 crores in q3 is that right yes sorry it's 1.8 crores 1.8 crores got it. got it. got it. thank you thank you the next question is from the line of nikhil from dam capital please go ahead hello uh yes, thank you for the opportunity sir uh you are able to hear me yeah i can hear you we can yeah. hear you so so i've got two questions so how much was the open access volume as a percentage in fy22 and where do we think it will go in fy23 see the open access this year our clearing price was 4 rupees 40 paisa there is a very high increase in the clearing price and uh, at this kind of price the viability of open access is very very low in most of the states that is why our open access volume has reduced to almost about 8% of the total volume what we have achieved so there is a fall in that and in fy23 again it depends on the clearing price if our clearing price is in the range of 3.2 to 3.5 rupees per unit i'm sure the open access volume will increase and uh, but it all depends on supply situation improvement okay so understood and uh, the second question is uh, there is a talk of unified carbon trading market so is there any chance our company will play any role in it have you heard of anything yeah 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 and we are fully aware about it we are in fact interacting with the bwe bureau of energy efficiency bureau of energy efficiency along with the ministry of environment and ministry of power they are working on this initiative so we definitely want to intend to launch this and uh, this is the initially they want to uh, they want to merge this esrs and the rcs and uh, they will have some um, multiplication factor to convert them into carbon credits and do the trading of that and subsequently more products will be added into this list understood sir and so just one last question uh, there was there is some cash uh, cash has increased from 46 uh, 46 out crores to 225 so any specific reason for it uh, basically it's the uh, year end and we need to have a liquidity because if you look at the year end the banking holidays so we uh -huh. need to maintain that the surplus fund to meet our payout obligation so that was surplus fund was cut because of the higher prices and the volatility in the prices so you need to have a liquidity to meet out your payout obligations and considering the bank holiday we need to keep that liquidity with us understood no problem thank you thank you the next question is from the line of swarnim maheshwari from edelweiss securities please go ahead yeah hello sir thanks for the opportunity and congratulations for good set of numbers uh, so the first question is uh, what is really causing the delay in ldc because i believe uh, it was well established uh, from the uh, apex court uh, almost about uh, quarter and a half back and the crc was already studying it very closely so what is the leading to the delay in the launch of ldc See, one is the regulatory process, regulatory process of admitting the petition, inviting public comment, and then doing the hearing. And uh, in this case, since it is a new product which they want to launch, they wanted to understand the implication of this, understand the product details. So I think that process is over now. Order is reserved. So we should get order in this month itself, maybe in this month or the May of, month of May. 
Okay. So, what time will it take to officially launch it from the day of uh, getting the order? We ready to launch it any time we get the order. We'll launch it. Okay. Okay. So then, I think it's a high chance that you may launch it in May or June. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the second question is, uh, don't you think that uh, there is a case that uh, you know it's an established fact that in the month of October and again in the month of April or May, there are always this uh, you know demand supply issues, some sort of mismatch. Uh, the merchant prices goes uh, through roof, and uh, discounts have to ultimately pay a very high price to you know get the things, and specifically when the international coal prices are very high. Do you think that this can revive the uh, medium-term PPA sentiment uh, in the country? See, the point is, if this kind of situation continues for a long time, long time means maybe six months, one year, then yes, there will be tendency on the part of the buyers to secure some contracts. But uh, I don't think, uh, I mean, October was for 15 days. After the first fortnight of October, second fortnight was very normal and things were uh, very normal there. Price discovery was happening. Prices also came down. I'm sure this time also it is for the month of April and maybe for 10 days of May. After that, the situation will be again normal. So, I mean... Market development can take place only when we have sufficient liquidity in the market. I don't think any market can develop under deficit scenario. So, if deficit continues for two, three years, yes, there will be definitely a tendency on the part of discounts to buy. And that was the case uh, prior to 2010-11. Lot many PPs were signed because there was deficit of power in the country. But I'm sure, looking at the kind of capacity what we have, uh, that situation, the situation, deficit situation is not going to continue for a long time. And uh, we should have uh, good liquidity on the sell side. Okay, so no, no threat to the merchant capacity uh, as per you? Pardon? So as per you, no threat to the merchant capacity that we have in the country? I, no, I don't see that. I don't see that. I don't see that. Okay. Got it. Got it. Sir, one final question. Uh, is now, with the you know new exchanges coming and the, uh, with the existing exchange getting more aggressive in terms of market share and all, uh, you know, how do you respond if they were to reduce their uh, transaction fees? Uh, I mean, uh, will you respond equally or, uh, uh, you know, you will let the market share actually go away? I mean, if you can just help us with that. Uh, your thoughts on that. We are operating in this market from the last 14 years. And from the last 14 years, there are two exchanges. If reduction in the transaction fees can help in getting the market share, I'm sure exchanges would have tried that. But I don't think that can happen. Market share is dependent on the value which you provide to the market participants. The liquidity which you have on the platform. It is basically a function of that. For a generator who is selling power, for him it is important to sell that power. If that power is not sold, he loses the opportunity. And it is, he loses the opportunity forever. For him, getting that revenue of 4 rupees is more important than 2 pesos transaction fees. And same is the case with discounts. So I think transaction fees is a very insignificant component in the whole process of sale and purchase of power. So we, we don't see any challenge because of this, and we don't want to enter into this game. Uh, got it, sir. Got it. But sir, what if it is, uh, if, what if it is actually more regulatory induced, uh, say, if CRC, you guys have to respond within 15 days, and if CRC takes a case that, uh, you know, two pesa, I mean, all the OPMR guidelines and all are there, but then, uh, you know, you still, got, uh, you still have to respond to that uh, transaction fees thing, which came on 25th of April. So if CRC was to induce it, uh, then that will be for all the exchanges uh, and for 
or can it happen that uh, you can be charged you know uh, different transaction fees for different products is that a possibility sir no to all different transfer uh, transaction fees for different exchanges means if you reduce my transaction fees then you are asking other exchanges to close down no no sir not not different exchanges different transaction fees for different products yeah different i mean all products are of similar nature whether it is day head market or time market or wind market it is all same electricity transactions so i don't think uh, that kind of a view will be taken and uh, as far as uh, approval of transaction fees by cfc is concerned as i explained earlier also i don't see any challenge in that because the regulators themselves very recently about a year back have approved trading margin 7 paisa for the trading companies and uh, looking at the values which exchange provides uh, they themselves have mentioned the regulation 2 paisa on other side and i'm sure when regulator is mentioning the regulation 2 paisa on other side they must have applied their mind before mentioning that so i am very comfortable in getting this approval got it sir got it uh, sir thank you so much and wish you all the best thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of aditya chadda from incred asset management please go ahead hello yeah can you come can you comment on the change in uh, trade payables and trade receivables which is uh, payables is 635 crores and receivables is at 87 crores what is the reason behind that the higher volume and the higher prices as you know the higher the electricity has been carried at almost 14 15 rupees so this has resulted in a significant increase in the payable amount so this is the general temporary phenomena because of the market sentiments nothing different as in when the electricity prices get normalized it will again settle down at the average rate thank you any other question Chitta. mr chadda no that section thank you the next question is from the line of pavan kumar from ratnatya capital please go ahead sir i wanted to understand uh, suppose in a situation uh, like that happened in april where uh, certain discounts like say andhra pradesh needed uh, certain power and if uh, any private player also wanted uh, power and he was uh, i mean uh, bidding for the same power so uh, from the same state is it like the discom has to purchase the power and then distribute uh, distribute it to the private player or the private player himself can directly access the exchange the question is not clear uh, which private players were talking about uh industrial players because i am i am assuming uh, discoms is uh, discoms are directly uh, dealing with both the commercial and industrial purposes but if a private player direct, directly wanted uh, an industry uh, who was uh, facing some short uh, shortage of power uh, wanted uh, access to uh, uh, access to the additional power can it get it from the exchange directly without yeah, going through the uh, provision is like this these industrial and commercial consumers are the consumers of distribution company they have taken connection from distribution company they are paying demand charge to the distribution companies okay now if these industrial consumers wants to avail power from the outside if they are able to avail power from the outside at a rate lower than what distribution company is charging them Hmm. Subject to open access regulations and open access charges, then they can do mm -hmm. so. That is allowed at the end of the act. And if they are not able to do that, then distribution company is obliged to supply them the power at the distribution tariff. <coughs> okay, but in the case distribution company is not able to supply the power, uh, uh, the other. route for them to meet, meet their demand is it through the exchange or uh, they have to get into bilateral contracts no no in that case they can buy from the exchange but the point is if there is enough power is available in the market then distribution mm. company will be most happy to purchase power and supply them power because these industrial consumers are their paying customers 
there will be happy to supply them power. So that kind of a situation when distribution company is not able to supply them will happen only when there is a shortage of power in the country. Okay, and in that case, actually, even the exchanges face the same issue. Yes, yes, yes. You are right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. That was my. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Yadav from Transient Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, sir. We Hello. can hear you. Please go ahead with your question. Yeah, hi sir. Good afternoon to the management team. Uh, sir, firstly, my question was regarding the long duration contracts. So, for the long duration contracts to be launched, is it uh, necessary that the derivative should be launched before that? Not so that the players have a more of comfort uh, entering into longer contracts? No, there is no such interlock. Both are independent activities. And uh, Derivatives are to be approved by SEBI and long, long duration contracts are no, to be No, sir, approved. I wasn't asking from the regulatory perspective. I was wondering from the market perspective, from the participants' perspective, uh, do you feel that they will feel more comfortable uh, if, if they have, uh, uh, as, like, the derivatives have also come in line and uh, come online and they can, you know, hedge their position. So they might feel more comfortable with a longer duration contract and that might uh, act as an impetus for you as well. Or, uh, or do you feel confident that okay, it's okay to go ahead with the longer duration contracts uh, without the derivatives? Yeah, I don't see any issue in that. I mean, going uh -huh. ahead with long duration contracts without launch of derivatives can uh -huh. happen. And uh, there is a, because already these bilateral transactions are happening in the market. True, so true, true. The bank is also typically shifting those bilateral transactions on the exchange rate form. So I don't see okay. any issue in that. Okay. Launch and of that you said is a short, short launch of derivatives will basically bring more liquidity in the market and reduce price volatility. Mm. And there will be mm. hedging options available to the market participants. So this will that will further deepen the market. Mm. Sure, sure, sure. And uh, as you had uh, mentioned before, uh, that anyways is a large market where you said the bilateral long contracts are around 50, 60 billion units. If I got it right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So my next question was regarding the developments on the gas business, the gas exchange business, where you've discussed a couple of quarters back, quarter back uh, there were certain impediments in the sense key, uh, terminals, certain GST issues, and a uh, couple of other uh, structural issues which are there before the gas market can be in a, in a full-fledged uh, mode. Uh, so if you can uh, give further updates on that, so how have we come forward in uh, last 12, 15 months or so? I mean, most of the impediments... And what are your expectations for the coming 12, 15, 18 months in the gas business? Yeah, I mean, most of the issues are still persisting. Uh -huh. Gas is under GSP, so there are different charges. Mm -hmm. Taxes which are being charged by the different states. So, if, I mean, we are not able to launch a uniform contract across the states. That is one issue. Second is the system operator. Uh, system operator, yes, there is a positive development on that. And the uh, ministry has decided that uh, they will create a system operator in the gas sector. Mm -hmm. So, work on that is going to start very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, rationalization of transportation tariffs. Regulatory PNGRB has initiated some action on that. It will take some time, but then yes, there is a good news from that. They have initiated some process in rationalizing the transportation tariff. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem what we are facing in the gas market today is very, very high gas price. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, the prices are so high that they are unaffordable for the Indian consumers. True. Mm -hmm. And the gas price, which used to be 5 $6, are today more than $30. Mm. So mm. because of that also, uh, gas exchange uh, volumes are impacted, but I'm sure these gas prices, which are very high today, in the mm. coming days, the prices should come down. And even if they come down to a range of $10, $12 also, that will lead to good transactions on the IGX platform. 
but the end usage of the gas continues no sir the the city distribution city gas distribution and every other end usage continues uh although the high prices are there uh so i mean yeah we are in a nascent stage and the business is developing but uh, uh the ecosystem is uh, running I, apart from the power part i agree where you said the cost goes too high for the power generators from the gas fuel uh, but uh, Do you feel city huh. gas distribution is getting gas out of the government produced gas, which is administered by its gas. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. the gas which was given to the power sector is now getting diverted to the city gas distribution system. Mm-hmm. And uh, industries they are forced to buy gas at high price. but many of the industries are now switching over to the other fuel options mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there was a time when using naphtha was almost 30% costlier than using gas mm-hmm. today using gas is 30% costlier than naphtha okay so i think uh, economics have changed but uh, gas price coming down to 10 12 will again change the whole economics and uh, Uh, industries will shift to the gas mm-hmm. and gas will become affordable at that price mm. okay 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 so uh, and the other issues also you mentioned so like in uh, uh, coming quarters let's say or we should expect more rationalization from the yes i mean government is also committed to increase consumption of gas in the country Mm-hmm. today gas consumption is 6% of the energy basket mm-hmm. and in the developed countries the share of gas is almost about 25% 30% the government has decided to increase gas share to almost about 15% by 2030 if government wants to do that mm-hmm. government will have to create a vibrant market in the country mm-hmm. and that can happen only when all these issues which we discussed mm-hmm. uh, are removed i mean gst is something which is necessary if you don't have a uniform price across the country then how buyer and seller will know what kind of costing they are going to have mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so so mm-hmm. okay okay uh sir so my uh, last question is regarding the pricing pricing uh, we charge uh, on the transactions uh sir so why does the so uh, can you help us understand the regulators rationale behind uh, you know traders getting a 7 paisa price and whereas uh, uh, exchanges are capped at a much lower uh, price per unit no if you look at the 2010 regulations for trading margin Mm-hmm. there there was a provision of 7 paisa if the rate is more than 3 rupees and 4 paisa if the rate is less than 3 rupees mm-hmm. since the power rate has increased to more than 3 rupees the regulator feels that the second option option is redundant now so they have made it 7 paisa very simple mm-hmm. case of gas in case of exchanges they feel that this is a a uh, technology platform driven process mm-hmm. so and, and and exchanges are charging two paisa on other side from the last 11 years so this is a market accepted practice so they have specified two paisa on other side mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, although there have been questions regarding uh, the competition and the pricing and everything and uh, you address it very well ki you provide much more value to the ecosystem uh are, are there possibilities uh, that we could have an upward revision in exchange fees or is that very remote uh, upward revision will take place only if we ask for it we don't intend to you don't intend to oh okay. 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 okay understood sir thank you thank you thank you thank you The next question is from the line of Lokesh Shetty, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Um, hello, sir. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. And this this happens to me my first question. So thank you for the opportunity. 
I read some time back in one of the interviews that uh, there is a plan to uh, launch an IPO for IGX. Uh, do you think uh, now is the right time, or do you think that uh, we should? I mean, the plan is to wait for things to get re regularized in terms of GST and the other bottlenecks that we are facing with the gas exchange. Uh, I think you haven't read the fine print in that. What I said was that as per the PNGRP regulations, we will have to bring down our stake in IGX to 25% within five years of the issue of regulations. So, our exchange got PNGRP approval in the first week of December. 2020. So by 2025 December, we will have to bring it down to 25%. So that means we will have to divest 25% equity. And I mentioned that the best option to divest this equity is through the IPO process. Right. So that means so IPO. I mean, we will like to hold the equity as long as we are allowed. And whenever we have to divest it, we will. I mean, we'll explore this option of IPO. Right, sir. So there is a possibility that uh, you can explore the other routes also, like a dying of the other. Okay. So the market conditions, three and a half years down the line, how can I say today what will be the best option? But uh, as of now, what we understand, what we see that IPO is probably the best option. Right, sir. Yeah, that was my only question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. As there are no further questions from the participants, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Sumit Kishore for closing comments. Well, thanks a lot, sir, for uh, your time and for giving Access Capital the opportunity to host this call. Uh, Mr. Goyal, would you have any closing comments? Yeah, I would like to thank each one of you for being part of today's con call. Uh, there have been many significant developments in the fourth quarter and fiscal year 2022. However, there are few challenges too, especially the increasing energy prices, including the commodity prices driven by various factors, including the global factors. We are working proactively to further develop the and strengthen the recently launched market segments, which have immense potential for the growth. At IEX, we remain committed to commit, committed to doing our bit towards facilitating India building a sustainable and efficient energy future. Thank you. I look forward to our next interaction with you. Till then, take care and stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Access Capital Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.